You are about to see us wire this entire boat in just eight minutes. Even though we invested days in the project and hours in editing it down, all for your viewing pleasure. To start wiring, we first mount all of the components. Here's the problem with cheap lights. You see the way that thing sits in there, that's what locks it in. If you've got anything that's longer than this, this won't work. So now I got this bracket and a bolt that will lock in with those pieces, but look, now it won't fit in here. So now we've got to drill that hole out. So I think I'm gonna start by installing this panel here, which is all the switches. That's gonna control the nav lights, the anchor light, the spotlight, the deck lights, bilge pump, all that stuff. So that switch panel with the fuse panel is all gonna go in. We're gonna have our battery switch here. The amp will be back there. The negative bus bar will be there. Switches here. Two nav lights are gonna go on the bottom down here. We got our nav lights hooked up. They're not wired, but they are on. Got our battery switch mounted. Got the uh, on off for all of our stuff we got this mounted got our radio on and mounted got our amplifier mounted and i just marked on the other sides i thought that that amp was a lot smaller than what it turned out to be that's a very big amp comparing it to the jl audio with a 100 watt channel four channel amp that is usually only like a like a brick almost but that thing is huge took a minute to get it mounted but now she's mounted I put on the labels for ground, remote, and power. So we'll hook all that up. We'll go ahead and mount these two speakers in here. So I do need to put that plate up and mount those two speakers. We probably got two hours left in just the wiring, putting the bus bar in for the ground and then putting ends on all those wires, running them to the switches, putting the labels on the switches. And that's about all we got left to do as far as the wiring is concerned. And we can go ahead and run our transducer wire, get that installed. We can go ahead and pull these battery cables up to the helm. We have got our battery cables and our transducer wire up here into the console. So that's a good thing right there. We've got to do some cleanup down in here to get all that rat's nest all cleaned up. I don't know where I'm going to stick this just yet. That clamps it down. So yeah, I might, I might have to put it over here so I could bring that transducer wire and the power wire up through there. I just got done putting these speakers in here and um, I don't know why I did that. So now I gotta take the thing off of there. This little plug on a boat, that is just a place for corrosion and problems. So I cut those things off and put actual heat shrinks on there. On the transducer, I mounted it a little higher than it really should be. And that is because, I mean, generally you want this right here to be the bottom of the boat. So that way the water comes off, skims across the bottom of this, and it's not low enough. The lower you go, the more it's going to read. But the higher you go, the less splash it's going to make. So as you go through the water, if you've got that thing deep down in the water, you're going to read more depth at higher speeds, but you're going to have a giant splash of water coming off of it. I don't need it deep because I don't need to read water at speed. So I mounted it a little bit higher, so that way there's not as much splash as I'm driving through the water. Now it's time to go ahead and get a lot of this wiring and stuff in there. I need to put in this ground block, the breaker for the stereo, and we'll do a lot of wiring. 
I'll try and get a camera in there while I'm hooking all this stuff up. This is one of those moments where you know you've crossed something and you look in here, hook it up to your amp, and it says builds on it. Something ain't right. A few moments later. What we need to do is find a hole saw or drill bit to allow us to send one for the power and one for the transducer through the console up here. I was thinking about coming back behind this light like this, but the problem with that is it's gonna be sitting on this light and this light definitely gets hot. I think I'm just gonna have them come down and they're just gonna kind of come off to the side and be like that. things are bright so we kind of got to figure out how to route this wire from the top right here and then go down the side of the engine right there because we're going to put our anchor light right here through the cowling we're going to wrap it around the flywheel once or twice right yes those wires aren't as long as i thought they were huh you're going to look ugly i mean beautiful too These two might work. Minimum safe depth, oh. Dude, like three inches. This stereo only has two auxiliary outputs to go to the amp. So we're just using these splitters with two male plugs on one end, one female, so I can split it up there going to the amp and that'll allow both of our speakers in the back and the speakers in the front to work off the same head unit. What about our anchor light? Ding. Ding. Anchor light looks good. Nav lights are rocking. What else? Bill's pump works, our search light. Awesome. There's our outlets, there's our plugs. Here's our lights. Lit up. So you can drive from up here, you got our GPS sitting there, and you can just lean right over here, look down in the water, and see everything that you need to see. Then when you're going home, you just pop on your spreader light, see what's going on. When you're on the boat, you hit those on, see what's up. <laughs> 